tell when this upper switch has been transformed using this switched boolean, we can kind of have a bit more fun with it. Right? So now, let's say we switch it over, and then we switch this upper switch. Well, let's say we wanted to do something with that. So, you know, there's all kinds of things we could do, but let's say I wanted to maybe display some text down below, but only when a certain sequence of switches has been pressed. So let's say we have to switch this and then switch this in order to see the text. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's start by just pulling in another object, and we'll put it down here at the bottom. So we'll pull in our objects library here. And you know what? I'm just going to put in a normal label. So it displays a static text string. I'll bring it in over here. And I will actually, whoops, I'll actually position it at the bottom here. So let's see, vertical, bottom, horizon, center. OK. Uh, now let's connect this label to our code. So I'm going to grab it, control click, bring it and just directly under my other outlet. This will be outlet my label. Okay, so now I can basically set and, uh, and alter this text if needed. So to start out, let's just grab the label and we'll put an initial text of just a blank string and we'll see if that works. So I think we can do that in our override func awake here. So I'm just going to leave a couple lines down below and outlet my label dot set text. And let's just try to put in an empty string. Okay, so when we do this, it should not be visible. Right? And just to do a sanity check, let's actually run it to see what it does, just so that we don't proceed too far with the wrong assumptions here. Okay, and while that's loading in the meantime, what am I going to look for in order to make sure that it doesn't switch down below? Okay, so it's working. It's not displaying a label because it's just an empty string. Great. So now we have our variable here switched. And basically, we can tell now if this has been switched or not. So basically, we need kind of a conditional statement. So for example, if this has been switched and also this has been switched, then we're going to display something in the label. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we need to connect our switch here to our code as well. And I'm going to put it underneath my action upper switcher. So I'll grab it here, control click, bring it over. And this will be an action. So action, uh, let's see, lower switcher. OK. And what this is going to do, this will also bring give us back a value. Um, and I'm going to use kind of the same logic here as well. So just make sure that everything is separate here. Yeah, OK. So this one, let's call it switch2 is equal to the opposite of switch to. And we also need to declare switch to as well up here. Var switch to bool started off as false. OK. And then here we basically do the same logic. So we will say if switched is true, right? So if switched and switch to is also true, then we will change the label text. It's right, so when we have an and statement here, this must be true and this must also be true. If either of these are false, it won't execute the code within this um, if statement. So we'll say outlet my label dot set text and we'll say boo. All right. Uh, and let's, let's see what happens now if we run this. Make sure it compiles correctly. OK, looks like it compiled successfully. That's good. And let's see if we can go nuts with these switches here. OK, switch 2 it shouldn't display anything. This also should not display anything. But if I switch this, boo. Right, so there we go. Switch this, switch that. There we go. We switch this, it switches away. So maybe a minor thing we can fix, but otherwise, it looks pretty good.
quickly fix that behavior if we just throw in an else statement. So else, we'll just hard code it to set the label to be an empty string. I'll let my label dot set text empty string. Okay, and then this will allow us to only display this text when the user inputs a certain uh, sequence. Okay, and I mean, there's all kinds of ways you could take it from here. You know, you could even do simple logic games, for example, to learn. But right, it's not showing anything, not showing anything. But we switch it, and there we go. Now, if we switch away, it goes away, and vice versa. Right, so we can switch here. And unless you hit the right sequence, it's not going to display. Another useful feature of switches is their enabled ability. So basically, we can put a switch at the top that further controls whether other switches will be enabled or not. And that's going to be useful if you're making, for example, a settings page for your app where you want to basically not allow certain things to be enabled until the first thing is enabled. So, for example, if we have, say, a sound switcher, and if the sound switcher is off, well, there's not going to be any need or ability even to alter the further switches. Otherwise, the switch will affect what kind of sound we output, for example. So let's go ahead and let's do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up some code here, and I'm going to get rid of all of our... Um, our things that we made. So get rid of that. Uh, get rid of this entire function as well as the one above it. Okay, so we're just going to go and start with a blank slate here. Okay, so there we go and get rid of all of this stuff as well. Okay, pop out that side panel to make sure everything's gone. Yep, it is. Okay, so let's go back into the main view here. We'll bring out our inspector. And I'm going to put in uh, basically three switches here. And the first switch will further control the other two switches. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to put three switches just kind of each on top of, each, of one another. Switch there, switch there, and switch there. Um, OK. So now we have our switches. And you know what? I'm going to make these a little bit smaller so that we can push them a bit to the right. Uh, so let's see here over there and this one as well and now it's just a little bit more visually clear that these two switches uh, these two down here kind of are affected by the one on top I mean there's other ways I could have handled that but for now this is gonna be good enough and also I'm just gonna edit the text in here um, instead of setting it programmatically um, because I think we all understand how to do that at this point so let's say actually this switch will control, I don't know, notifications. And we're not going to attach any specific behavior except for these switches. But let's say this one will be uh, audio notifications and this one will be haptic notifications, for example. And let's come in and let's fix this text size so that it's not, um, not taking up two lines like that. Uh, so let's see here. Where is that? Here it is. So we'll change the font to system. That'll allow us to change the size. Okay, there we go. And just so that these two match, let's do the same for these. So we'll say system, bring it down. This was size uh, 12, so the same for this one. And this one as well, otherwise it'll look a little bit wonky. All right, size 12. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's set these so that these are disabled from the get-go, whereas this one will also be disabled, but we can enable it. Or this one will be switched off, rather, not disabled. Um, so let's go to our code, put up our assistant editor. Okay, so we will grab each of these and make them outlets. Outlet my notification switch. Kind of unwieldy, but it'll do. Grab this one as well. Outlet my audio switch. And this one as well. Outlet my haptic switch. All right, let's clean that up a little. Oh, 
bookmark outlets. Okay, and now when Funk Awake runs, uh, let's see here. Actually, we'll put it in. Um, yeah, so now when Funk Awake runs, let's go ahead and configure these interface objects. Uh, so, first of all, outlet my notification switch. Let's say by default we want it to be switched off. So, outlet my notification switch dot set on and we will say false okay and also outlet my audio switch dot set enabled set enabled will be false as well and then also the outlet below it outlet my haptic switch dot set enabled false okay let's do a sanity check to make sure it's doing what we expect it to do in our simulator here okay build succeeded I don't see why it would have failed but that's always a nice sign and here it goes okay so these are now disabled can't affect them. I can switch this though. Right, so maybe we should also set these two to be uh, off as well so that it's kind of more clear to the user that these are not selectable. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we will just basically do outlet uh, my audio switch that's set on false outlet my haptic switch that's set on false and you know I could have easily done this as well in the attributes inspector but we're already in our code here so may as well just do it programmatically okay let's uh, let's see what that looks like and while that's loading up let's consider our next move so we want to basically be able to switch notifications on and off Right? So when we switch it on, we want these to become available. And that's actually going to be pretty straightforward, pretty simple to do. Right? So now we can't affect it, uh, and notifications will default to off in our specific example here. And the easiest way, really, it's, it's actually not too difficult. So I'm going to declare a variable up here, and we'll say, let's call this notification switch. Actually, we already have my notification switch, so let's say switched will be a boolean and it will default to false right, pretty much exactly like we did in our uh, previous examples uh, okay and then after that we will basically throw in a function uh, let's see where should I put it um, I'll put it kind of down below our will activate why am I putting it there just because okay so this one it can be both an outlet and also an action right so I'm going to control click bring it over connection action action notification notification switcher okay and then in here when this is switched it's going to set these both to enabled okay so let's see here so when this is switched first of all let's do one of these guys so basically it's going to set it to the opposite of whatever it defaults as so initially it's going to be false when this is hit, it's going to switch that to true, and we'll say if switched is equal to true, and of course the shorthand is we can just say if switched. If switched, outlet my audio switch dot set enabled true, and outlet my haptic switch dot set enabled true alrighty and then otherwise so else we will just call self dot awake which is where we kind of set our default settings with context self okay because this 
you know, it'll set the switch, the big switch to be off, but the switch should be off anyway if switched is false. Uh, so let's try it out and let's see if this will work. And then after this point, we could kind of figure out the logic we want our actual switches to do. In this case, they don't really do anything, but if we wanted to, then we could kind of pick up, okay, these are enabled, so now these are switchable. Okay, try this out. Now this can be switched. And this as well, if we switch this off, it kind of puts them all off again. All right, so that is a really useful way we can use switches. And I'm sure you've seen this before if you've used um, iOS before, right? It's pretty common to see this kind of thing in iOS. And that's the useful feature about using enabled or disabled is that these, we can basically put functions on them and they won't get called even if they're touched because they need to be able to be, able to be switched. So to show you what I mean by that, let's just kind of do something like uh, print out to console when one of these is switched. So grab one of these guys, bring it over, action, make sure I designate it as action. Action my audio, and let's see here. So we can do the same thing here. So we will say var audio bool default to false. And so let's see here. So first of all, we will say audio switches the audio. Oops, audio. Okay, and we'll say if audio print, uh, let's see, I've been switched, else print, I haven't been switched. All right, let's see what this does here. And we're going to keep an eye on our console, which of course is down here at the bottom of Xcode. Build succeeded. Okay, there it goes. All right, so now if I try to hit this, nothing happens, right? This console is not doing anything, but I switch this. And now you can see I can switch it. When I switch it off, I can't actually even run the function. That's a really useful feature of switches there. And that's how we can do that.